Hello, I'm Corey. And I'm Kelly. It's my sister. <laughs> my older sister. So, last night I was hanging out with some friends and just thinking about the change that people go through in life. And how, like when you really know somebody and you know them at their core, when you've known them for almost your whole life, a decade can go by and it's like, there's still that core person. A lot of things can change in their life. A lot of habits can change. But when you really know somebody, it's like you know how they're doing. You know what part of the cycle in their life they're in. Whether they've broken cycles and progressed and moved forward. And uh, on my way over here, it's a question, do I believe in reincarnation? Mm. You know? A new version of something from the past. The definition of reincarnation. I was, I just typed in, I'm 46 years old. So I've reincarnated about 17,000 times. I think every single day that we live, I'm either going to progress and be a new creature, a new person, or I'm going to digress and be a new person. Um, and if you talk about the actual body, I think it's like every 30 days, except for our teeth and a few other parts of our body, is a completely new person. So, just hanging out with them last night and seeing like who I am, uh, there was somebody there and there was some alcohol, and one of the guys there asked me to drink, and my other buddy, he's like, he doesn't drink. And the guy's like, oh, well, we're going to just toast. And he's like, he doesn't drink. <laughs> it's like, he's like, oh, well, okay. And so I toasted my water, you know. And it's a matter of just who I am. And the person that I was with, he's been around me now for a good amount of time. And he knows what I do, what I don't do, who I am. And I've known him my whole life known him since we were probably 10 years old he knows where I've been what I've been through and he knows that alcohol is not good for me I mean alcohol is just not good for the body period but he knows that alcohol is really not good for my mind mm -hmm. so I have I love that definition a new version of something from the past here I am I mean I'm still Corey I still look the same. Um, and you can look at me 20 years ago and tell that that is the person that I am. But I am a reincarnation every single day. And I get to choose how I want to be, who I want to be. It is a every single day that I wake up, I have an opportunity to reincarnate, to be a version better or worse or just different from who I was in the past. It's an opportunity every single day that every person has to choose the version of who they want to be. I love that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so do I. I've never thought of it like that. Um, <laughs> gosh. No. Okay, we could go so many different directions with this because you brought up quite a few different things that's popping into my head. Um, uh, so reincarnation is, is a really interesting topic. So is alcohol. Alcohol is another really interesting topic that, that I actually was really thinking and pondering about the other day. And I thought about all of the, like, it's called spirits, you mm -hmm. know, and, and it's something that like different alcohols have different spirits with them and that's like that's that's a really interesting conversation that I think we could take this also but um with reincarnation I do I love thinking about the fact that every single day we have an opportunity to to create to create anything that we want to create we don't have to bring the past with us every single day um I love that 
you know, there's, I, I read and I learn a lot. Like I just, I love listening to people and, and I've listened to a lot of people that talk about reincarnation and past lives and, um, and that they remember past life events and they know who they were, you know, and all that kind of stuff. And, and I've really pondered on that a lot because there's, I mean, I don't have the knowledge. I don't have that information. I have not been given a deep understanding of past lives or, you know, I only know what I know. And one thing that comes to me that I've shared with a few people who believe in reincarnation that I just don't have that knowledge of, um, something, you know, we have within us our ancestors and their lives and their behaviors and you know I'm learning a lot about like epigenetics and just just about how our ancestors have such an impact on us and, and on who we are and we carry them within us it's like we are the top of this triangle of all of our ancestors and it's like we are a representation of them, of, of our, our family and, and all that, um, that they have, that they've passed on to us. And it's like, and I think about that and I think about all the experiences that my ancestors have had and all of the lives that they've lived and that that is part of me. And so you know, when people say, yeah, I was this person, you know, I, I lived in the 1800s and I was this person, you know, I think, well, maybe that's just like part of your ancestry, you know, who that it's in your blood, it's in you, it's in your memory bank. It's just, it's part of who you are. You know, that's, that's just a little thought that comes to me with reincarnation, but I don't, I don't personally have a belief that we die and then our spirit is born again into the same mortal life. Like I don't or have into that a dog or right a into some living bug or something. Tree. Yeah, I don't have that belief. I believe that we have this mortal experience, and our body dies, our spirit leaves it, and we move on to our next spirit life. We move on to a new life. Um, and we continue to learn. We continue to grow without our body. We, we've already done this part. <laughs> continue <laughs> you know? to reincarnate. Into just, but, but <laughs> just not on this something new. earth yeah. in a different body, you know. But we will, like Jesus Christ, be resurrected with a perfected body, you know, after, after we spend time in the spirit world doing whatever we do there. You know, if, if that and happens. And continue to progress. Yeah. Or call it reincarnate. I mean, right. you call it, call we it whatever call you it want. We can call it whatever we want. Semantics is all that is. Right. And you, yeah, exactly. you mentioned ancestors. I mean, I, I always love it when my dad, he, I'm the son of Willie Willard Powell. He was the son of William Cletus. He was the son of Willie Thomas to Thomas Evan to James Wesley Powell. I mean, you can just go back and if you look at pictures of them, I mean, it's obvious <laughs> that who I Powell. am. I mean, <laughs> that right there is complete evidence that I came from him. And do I have memories of them? Yeah, it's in my DNA. So I can definitely see how that could bring me to the belief that I lived once upon a time. Because, I mean, it's between here and the spirit world is so thin. Mm -hmm. I mean... How much interaction did we have with our ancestors before we were born here? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't have the answers to that. But I do know that something was going on, and I was a part of it, even if I wasn't here in this mortal experience, but now it's my turn. And, yeah, spirits. That's a, that's a always yeah. a when you mention that word on alcohol, anytime somebody says, you, know, you hear that and it's called spirits more often in the past, but um, it is. You are definitely opening yourself up to a bottle of spirits. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, truly. It will completely change a person. Yeah. Immediately. <laughs> I mean... That first shot, the personality changes. 
the whole vibe in a in a room completely changes once the spirits are opened up and you can take that metaphorically literally however you want um I've just had so many experiences in my life, throughout my life, with alcohol. Like, I've... I mean, if you want to talk about alcohol. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I don't know where this will go. But, like... I... I mean, the first time that I tried alcohol, I was... Um, in high school. And I, on, and I took, like, a couple sips of someone's daiquiri at a Mardi Gras parade. And it comple- it made me buzz, buzzy in my head. And, um, and ev- all of my friends, just like you, like, all of my friends knew that I don't drink. Like, I, I would always say no to alcohol all the time. And I don't know what got into me, but I just decided to try it. And all of my friends were so disappointed in me. Like, they told, like, I had friends tell me, oh my gosh, I can't believe you drank. Like, I never thought you would ever do that, you know? And, and so then I'm like, oh, I'm such a horrible person. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm such a bad example. And then, like, all that started coming on me. But, but it's just funny, um, thinking back throughout my life. Like, so I've never really been a drinker. It, alcohol has not been something that I've really... I've never really drank a whole lot. Except for when you did. Except for when I did, right. <laughs> the times whenever I would, it, and it would always stem from, like, emotional, my emotional health or illness, honestly, because I was emotionally sick. And whenever I would dip down into, like, major depression and and medication wasn't helping, like nothing was helping. And, and alcohol was always, was one of those things that the few times that I did drink it, it like lifts you up. It's like, Oh, that makes me feel good because there is a spirit about it because there's something about it that it does. It like, it totally takes away all inhibitions, (laughs) which can be a really dangerous thing. Um, but it like it it can make you just feel so alive and just so happy and so like whenever you're in a depression and you drink it and it's like oh i'm so good and i can like do stuff and i'm happy and i don't mind and everyone's just like you become like a totally different person and yeah for the few times that that it causes you to feel that way but it is a depressant Mm -hmm. it is a depressant why am i so depressed drink alcohol every day it turns on you (laughs) it it can feel like your best friend and it's doing so good for you and it feels good and then all of a sudden it will just flip on you and it will make you not want to get out of bed or you can't get out of bed unless you have a drink I know that I have friends who are have dealt with alcoholism and they can't even start the day without a drink DTs till you get that first shot I've thankfully I've never experienced that and I've never been there I've never allowed myself or I've never been caught in in it like yeah. that. But but it's interesting too with alcohol that like each alcohol type has its own type of spirit. I don't know if you've recognized that or realized that like tequila is really different than vodka. I I do know that people act different depending on what they're drinking. And any alcoholic would agree to that. I mean, some alcoholics say, I can't drink whiskey, but I'll drink vodka. Right. I mean, one puts them into rage. One puts them into peace. One puts them into mania. One puts them into depression. Yeah, it's so So, weird. Because they do. They all have their own type of... I really think that it is spirits. It's, you know... I mean, it's called that for a reason. And it does, it, it can completely change a person, changes a person's life. Yeah, when you said I never drank a lot, but when I did drink, <laughs> I drank a lot. It's It made me think of the, something I've heard. I only smoked crack once for two months straight. Right. You know? Yeah, it's like, exactly. Yeah, I've never been a crackhead except for that long streak of smoke right. and crack. <laughs> right, yeah. I didn't drink a lot until I drank a lot for yeah. like months at a yeah. time. And then, yeah. then I was like, 
Yeah, drinking every single day, starting at like, you know, 11 o'clock in the morning. And the yeah. beautiful thing about right. that is today you have an opportunity to be something new. Right. Yes. I woke up today not craving alcohol, not wanting it, not even wanting to not put it into thought. my body. Like, mm. because I recognize the poison in it and that it does change me and mm. it makes me feel sick. And I don't want that in my life. Like, I want to feel good. Yeah, I had a dentist appointment last week and had a tooth pulled and I'm going through that process of getting an implant and um, had a couple tooth feet, mm -hmm. if I'm going to be honest. Um, but the first thing he asked is if I wanted some nitrous. Mm. And I'm like, dude, yeah. I used to buy nitrous by the cases and we'd go on days, benders on that crap. You know, talk about psychedelics. But... It, um, I said no. Uh, Good for you. I'll probably leave here and be down at the Ross shop. Uh, and then when I was leaving, he was filling a prescription. I was like, "Don't give me any pain pills. Give me some ibuprofen." You know, I left and my my teeth. There was a there was a valid reason to take a pain pill, I guess. But the only pain that it would have killed is the pain that I deal with in my head. Mm -hmm. And I would have been straight back to fentanyl. I mean, that's mm -hmm. once you put an opiate in me, I'm not going to stop there. But I said, no, I'm an addict. I can't, I can't take that. I don't want to take that. And it wasn't even a thought that I had to have. It wasn't a struggle in my head of, do I get it and just save it? Do I get it and... It, it's not a reservation. I don't have that reservation there. So that is a reincarnation of me. Yeah, that's awesome. That is just a complete shift of where my consciousness is at today. I don't, uh, I don't wake up thinking about, okay, so I made a bunch of money yesterday. I can pay my bills. Got it all. Got a couple hundred dollars extra. I can go spend it. And mm. I deserve it. I, yeah, I'm doing good. You know, an addict doesn't just use when they're down. An addict is going to use when they're celebrating because they achieved some accomplishment. Or they're going to use because they lost everything and life sucks. Or they're going to use just because it's Tuesday <laughs> or Saturday. I mean, it's just, that's an addict's mentality. So I can't use a pain pill because I've got some pain. Because the pain's not going to go away. The mm -hmm. pain is going to come back, and it's the emotional pain. So that was just a really wonderful feeling to not even have the, the even thought that I was going to take something. Like it didn't even cross my mind. And that is that's a huge. first for me. Yeah, that's very huge. Know? And... Uh, like, you would think that that could be a trigger, like, since last week, that my mind could have started obsessing about, okay, and it crossed my mind once or twice, like, oh, you know, just because of the fact that it was put in front of me, but I haven't considered it, like, it's, fleeting thoughts is just habits from 30 years of addiction, but the, the actual conscious part of me today even the subconscious part of me today doesn't want that because I know what it reincarnates me into mm -hmm. I know who I will wake up as tomorrow mm -hmm. if I do something today and I'm happy today I'm happy with who I am today and a lot of people if they I mean if I really threw everything out of my life which most of it is out if you look at all of our videos but I have plenty of reasons to be sad. I have plenty of reasons to be depressed. I have plenty of reasons to lay in my bed. I have plenty of reasons yeah. to go out and be destructive. But I don't have any excuse. I don't have any excuse to go down that road. I, I, I don't want it. I don't want to be that. And... The people that are in my life today that I'm actually spending time with and coming out of my shell that I've been in for a couple years in this recovery process, um, 
they know who I am. And these are people that have known me my whole life and they're actually so happy that I'm me, that I'm who I am, that person that they've always known. Because even when they were having fun with me, they always knew since I was a teenager that I had a problem. It was always, I was a really good person to hang out with if you're an addict because I was always the person you could say, well, I'm not as bad as him. Mm. So I was always a really good person to have in your group because you could always say, well, I'm not a, I don't have a problem. Corey's got a problem, you know? So that the people that really love me and care about me and know me, they, they're happy to see me where I'm at and they will tell anybody, don't offer that to him. Yeah. <laughs> and and that's a true friend. Yeah. You know? Because they, they like who I am. Yeah. yeah. That's too awesome. And I like who I am, uh-huh. you know? And uh, I don't like that person that has been before. Mm-hmm. And that isn't, that isn't me. That is a carnation of who, uh, who I have been before. But... Yeah, that, that person doesn't even exist, even on a molecular level. Um, I mean, I've even had to pull a couple teeth out because of who I've been. Mm. I'm going to get some fake ones put in. But, uh, you know, my choices have have caused things that I'm repairing, and it just feels wonderful. I mean, that's wonderful. I had a couple teeth pulled out, and that... Those, that stuff is gone and mm-hmm. it was it was embedded in there you know that's part of our our of who we are I'm glad that stuff's removed from me mm-hmm. <laughs> that's a little more of me that is just gone mm-hmm. so put the fake ones in mm-hmm. <laughs> I know I've got one more left with all the silver stuff in it from being a kid and all that <laughs> sugar. It's, it's about to go. I got one left. So why did but we man, all have cavities? What? I don't know. Yeah? I don't know what it is. We love sugar. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay, <laughs> oh no, yeah, my yeah, genetics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah genetics. I, probably sugar is probably something that's gone on for a long time in our family. Mm-hmm. You all know? the sweet cereals and roll, mm-hmm. all the little chocolate rolls, mm-hmm. just all of, yeah. Oh, dang. And it goes yeah. on with my kids, you know? Yeah. And their mother, uh, she's always had teeth problems. And it's like all of her siblings have, even though two of them are adopted. So is it genetics? It's sugar. It's whatever I'm putting on my teeth. Mm-hmm. You know, it could be smoking. It could be tobacco in any form. Um, what am I putting in my mouth that's causing my teeth to decay? Mm-hmm. So it's all choices. Like, I want my body to be healthier. I want to progress. I got some glasses. I'm working on my teeth now, getting blood work done. How can I improve my life? What can I do to reincarnate today and progress and move forward? I just, I, I'll even read it again. I love that. A new version of something from the past. I, mean, I have been many things in the past. Mm-hmm. And I am a new version. of, And I think it is a more pleasing version for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Whether you call it good or bad, you throw that out the window. It is a more peaceful version of me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm so proud of you, too, just being able to go to the dentist and have all that work done. So embarrassing. Not, <laughs> but to not get nitrous and to not get pain medicine, because when I go to the dentist, I'm like, oh, I do get nitrous. <laughs> yeah. I do get pain medicine. And, and something that I learned from this last time, and you having three pulled at one time, you know, I did get the pain medicine and, and I took it for a week and my pain was so intense. Like I had so much pain and, and that is what pain medicine will do. It will increase your pain because as the pain medicine wears off, you feel the pain. Yeah. And so I am totally aware of that. And it caused me to drop like my energy level, my vibe, just all of it. Like I just felt 
lower. Like I could feel it. I knew what it was doing to my body. And yet, and I chose it. That's the really crazy thing is that I chose to do it. That's like this a couple days ago, two days ago, I made a sandwich with lots of cheese and I don't eat cheese. I don't eat dairy a whole, I say I don't, but I obviously do. <laughs> but not I mean, lot. I don't very often because of the fact that it causes me to get really nasally, like sneezy and snotty and stuff. And so I don't like to feel that way. So I, I don't eat cheese and dairy very often, but I chose to make a sandwich and pile on the cheese knowing I was kind of hoping that it wouldn't happen because I keep trying to test myself to see, well, is it going to happen this time? But it happens every single time. And what is it? Why is it that we know and we make a choice knowing the consequence of that choice and keep doing because it? Because you're the same version yes. of who you were yesterday. Right. So until you become a new today. version of <laughs> yes. a new version of yourself, you'll stop ah. causing that to happen. And with the pain pills, yes. I would be in pain today. Now that the pain pills are run out, my prescription's gone, my teeth would be killing me. Yeah. But Friday, Saturday, I was in pain. Sunday, I was in pain. I don't have, and there's a little bit of discomfort in one of them, but it's gone. It's over. But if I would have been on the pain pills, my teeth would be hurting me <laughs> now. Yeah, they would. And I'd be like, give me the ibuprofen because I'm out of that. And I'd be out there somewhere else. But mm -hmm. the pain's going to come no matter what. So my dad had his knee replaced. And just to be a warrior, the dude took no pain medication. And anybody that has a knee replacement is going to validate taking pain pills. But once you stop taking the pain pills, your knee is going to hurt even more than it hurt while you were taking the pain pills. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to go through the pain eventually. All you're doing is pushing off the pain Absolutely. to when you run out of the pain pills. Yeah. And then you start recovering from the pain. Yeah. The body has so many endorphins and so many ways to heal itself. And my body said, ouch, that hurts. Mm -hmm. And it sent stuff to my mouth that naturally is fighting off that pain and the only pain that I really would have been killing is the pain that I'm not carrying with me today that emotional pain the pain that I don't want to look at that mm -hmm. I've chosen to look at over the last however long we've been doing this I've chosen to look at all that pain and be done with it and now, you know, some physical discomfort, it's okay. It's going to go away. But if I choose to go the other route, the physical discomfort is going to have to be passed through mm -hmm. sooner or later. Yeah, I've got someone close to me who is in <clears throat> a lot of mental challenges right now and going to a psych doctor and having to get prescriptions and change prescriptions. And, I mean, it's just... You know, when the anxiety comes up, they just want to add something else. Whenever you can't sleep, they want to add something else. Whenever, you know, this happens, they just constantly changing stuff. And, and I was talking to them and, and trying to share that, you know, that is in us. You know, if, if you get medication because you have anger and, and you take the medicine to make the anger go away, the anger is still there. The medicine is just delaying the pro suppressing delaying it. it. Yeah. It's suppressing it. And it's like every, we all have to at one point in our lives, if you want to truly be well, we have to at one point in our lives look at the stuff and stop trying to medicate it away, try, try, stop trying to distract it away and and stay in all of the distractions. Um you know, I've had something coming up, and, and I shared in our last video about it, 
you know, and I've had the eye twitch happening and I've just been having just recognizing my codependent behaviors and the, the emotions and the feelings that are underlying all of that stuff. Like I've become aware of it, but I haven't actually like sat with it. I've been distracting myself. I've been doing other things. I, um, will get online and just read because I just, I love learning stuff, but, but it's a distraction. Whenever, whenever we recognize something, see something about ourselves and we know we have to process it, we know we have to feel it. If, if we start doing other things and ignoring that, that's when it's not healthy. Like me reading stuff and learning stuff and being online and, and listening to things like all of that is great and it's wonderful and it helps us to improve our lives. And, um, but whenever we recognize something about ourselves that needs to be addressed and needs to be looked at and felt it's in those times we need to be journaling. We need to be meditating. We need to not be searching outside of ourselves for the answers and how am I going to get help going to the doctors and getting the pills and all that kind of stuff? No, it's sitting with it. Mm -hmm. And that's what I have not done. And I think it's because I, I'm, I'm feeling right at this moment. I think because there is, it, it feels, it feels hard. It, it feels like a deep one. Like it feels like I'm going to sob mm -hmm. <laughs> because I haven't, I have not cried about any of it yet. And so it's like, Tapping into how I felt then, I know that that it is a big emotional stuff, and and I think that sometimes my fears keep me from going into it, and and that's what it is. It's it's our fears, our fears of what could be on the other side, because all we know is what we've just always been. All we know is today. We don't know what we can be reincarnated into on the other side of it, and so we stay in the comfort of who we've always been, who we've become up to this point. And, and there's that fear of reincarnation. Yeah. The fear of the unknown is, I mean, it's real. It is. Yeah. And so I just need to like, not be so busy with myself and distracting myself. And, and I'm recognizing that I'm seeing that over the last couple of days. And so, yeah, I just anyway, got to do it. What's the, yeah staying busy I've been really really busy the last few days and today I said um, time to take some spiritual time mm -hmm. time to chill out and just think you know and not think 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 like get in my head but stop meditate um, life is just so much better whenever you just look at the things and, you know, the medications and everything, it's a process. We've talked about mm -hmm. that before. It is necessary mm -hmm. to get stable, but it's not the goal. Right. The goal is to get all of that out, to get all of the medication out of my life and to work through all the damage and all the pain and all that just stuff. And when I'm doing good, continue to work on myself so there's always progress to be made mm -hmm. there's always a better version of me to become and that's never gonna end that's eternal so I just I'm, I'm happy you know life is good mm -hmm. the the insecurities that come with addiction they're so strong. I mean, to break free of that cycle and those fears and the everything that goes along with it, it just goes away. If you are in the middle of addiction today and you feel trapped, it just starts today. And those things will, if you're willing to look at it, if you're willing to walk through it instead of try and go around it, it will it will get weaker and weaker and weaker until it's not even a part of who you are. It's reincarnation. I mean, who do I want to be today? And who do I want to be tomorrow? Because what I do today is going to determine that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. 
Absolutely. I ate that cheese and I knew the next day I woke up and I was, <laughs> I was sneezing and snotting. I, yeah. yeah. Making those same, being stuck in the same thoughts, being doing the same behaviors, creating mm. the same exact things that I don't want in my life. Yeah. So I just have to make a new choice. Yeah, mine is even eating just too much good stuff. Right. I just don't need to put that much stuff in my body. It doesn't make me feel, doesn't do good things for my digestive mm -hmm. system. And, you know, your body's storing it and it's just... How can I strengthen my spirit? How can mm -hmm. I strengthen my spirit to be in control of my body instead of my body being in control of me? Yeah, so. Absolutely. And one of the greatest ways is fasting. Oh, without a doubt. And I haven't fasted in quite a while. And I keep, um, I've been feeling this pull again to do the, another alternate day fasting. And so I, I, I'm going to. Let's do I'm, it. I'm putting that out there. That's like something I need to because I've got these things. I've got these habits within me that are keeping me kind of stuck. And I know that with fasting, I mean, we've been told that through fasting and prayer, there are some spirits that can only be cast out of us by fasting, by fasting and prayer. And, prayer. Yeah. and it's those spirits of just all the, the negative stuff, it, you know, and it's not like, you know, I think that we think about, um, people being possessed with spirits, like in a certain way, like, you know, you think of the exorcist, but, but it's not that it's like, we can have just eat negative entities around us and just attached to us and, and keeping us stuck in these certain behaviors. And Jesus told us, he taught us that, that, these are the types of spirits that can only be, you know, cast out, cast away by fasting and prayer. Or if you look at it uh, in scriptural context, the sins of the fathers. You know, you're talking about the generational thing. Mm -hmm. A lot of the things mm -hmm. that we carry with us, mm -hmm. you can call it sins or whatever, habits, things that we do, things that my grandpa did, my great grandpa did. Those are things that can only change within me through fasting and prayer, meditation, and you know, helping my children and their children overcome those things so that they don't, ha they don't even have to deal with the things I dealt with because I'm dealing with them and I'm correcting those un unhealthy behaviors. You know, bringing that up, and since we were talking about alcohol, is just interesting because we have alcoholism in our family, like in we our were, roots. Like, I mean, we've had ancestors it up in the country. <laughs> yes, uh -huh. we've had our ancestors have been murderers and spent time in jail and prison. You know, and like alcoholism. And so it's like all this stuff is just. It's just stuff, and it's and the behaviors that get, you threw that out there, but it is all the truth. It's true. It's in our DNA. It is true, and the behaviors that come <laughs> with living in that, and and family members who who live with addicts, and I mean, it just it all creates who we have become, and and so we are pulling all those magnets off of us. We are pulling, we are getting rid of all of that stuff, and, and that is how we change the generations after us. That is how we stop those behaviors. Is how we much, become aware of it, and we change it. How much do you love your children? You know? Am I willing to make those changes so that they don't have to go through the things I been through and they've already been affected but I can now teach them new you know, teach them differently teach them better ways mm -hmm. and uh, yep. help them progress further than I'll ever progress in my life so mm -hmm. um, life is good I want to be a better version of me today me too that's all we got <laughs> All we got is today. Yeah. So I know that if I work on being a better version of me today, tomorrow I will be thankful for me today. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. Love y'all. Absolutely. Bye y'all. <laughs>